Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all holy praises are due forever, the Lord of the worlds, who came to us in the divine person of Master Farad Muhammad. We are forever grateful for his coming and we thank him for his raising up in our midst, his true servant, his final apostle. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, it is in those two holy and righteous names that I would like to greet you once again, my dear brothers and sisters, in the Nation of Islam, greeting words of peace and of paradise. We say it in the Arabic language once again, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa alaikum Praise be to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Um, sitting here listening to our brother, Brother Minister Kenneth. Um, and thank you for the invitation to come to the rostrum and speak to the believers. And you are absolutely correct. We do need to have guests inside of the temple. Um, it is always the lifeblood of any nation, any organization is the, is the new blood. Is, is, is that, you know, that constant stream of new recruits bringing that energy. Um, you know. One of the things that I like to I like to watch um, I'm I'm a sports fan I make no no bones about it I, I like to watch sports um, I played ball when I was growing up I, I I was a point guard on my basketball team in high school um, I learned a great deal about organization teamwork playing organized ball when I was growing up as a kid not a, you know as a young man and um, I still enjoy watching ball. I like, I love watching the NCAA tournament. The, I love watching the kids play, um, the young young men play. Um, and one of the things that I enjoy about watching the NCAA tournament versus watching the NBA is that these these young brothers they play with a youthful exuberance. They play with a hunger. There's an innocence attached to them that you don't see later on. You know when. Right. When you're making a hundred million dollars, yeah. you know, right. and, and you're getting, you know, fingernails manicured and pedicured on the way to the arena in the back of a lim stretch limousine, you know, yeah. it is an innocence. There's and there's a youthful exuberance. There's there's a there's a love and a passion for the game, right. and a, and and a, and a respect for the team, mm -hmm. and the team concept that you see in uh, on the college level that you don't see. Once you get to, to the pros, at least for the most part, there's exceptions to that rule. Um, so, you know, it's, it's inevitable. You know, you come to the temple and you hear the teachings and we've been listening to the teachings for years and years and years. And it's, it's a good thing because it keeps us sharp. It keeps us on point. Um, and we, we can never lay our guard down, especially living in a world like this. But we want to get new people we want to develop strategies on how to get these young people in here That's right. you know these young people today i mean they used to call they call my generation generation x That's right. and we were like we were excuse the slang we were off the hook mm -hmm. my generation was crazy you know but this generation that's coming behind us are our children so imagine right you know if we were, if we were, you know, what we were, imagine what this generation is. So we, we have to develop strategies. Right. We have to develop new means of going about it. And one of the things that, that um, struck me I, and, and troubled me tremendously. And I'm going to tell you what, what happened the other day. And I spoke to Brother Raheem about it briefly afterwards. We, we've had a very long winter. And Friday was like 80 degrees outside. Mm -hmm. So I got out of work and I said, I put on my pull-up bar gloves. I said, I'm going to the park. I'm going to get busy outdoors for the first time in, in months because it's just the weather's been, I like to work out outdoors. So I went to the park and on my way to the park, I see these two young, young ladies. I mean, they were couldn't have been no older than 12, 13 years old. And we have children that age. Some of that grandchildren that age. And one of them says to the other, 
Dig this shit. Says, um, I don't like any of my exes. <laughs> exes. Like, you know, my ex. Somebody. Somebody. Right? Any of my exes. Meaning more than one. And this is a child. Right? And you're one of my exes. Said that to the other girl. Oh. Oh, yeah. Now, I was stunned. I'm like, I literally, like, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I had to, like, I don't usually, I usually, because, you know, when you live in New York, you just become accustomed to seeing and hearing crazy things all the time. So it's like you develop, like, this immunity to it almost. It's a shame, but it's just, you just, it's a survival mechanism. Because as a righteous man, seeing and hearing certain things, it does injury. To who and what we are as Muslims. Mm -hmm. Certain things a Muslim really don't have no business hearing or seeing. Because right. it does injury to the core value system that we are striving to live by. Yes, sir. Right? But as a, but I, I mean, you know, we, but this was so outrageous that I literally stopped. And I did I just hear that? Then I turned around and looked at these girls. And I just, I, I, you know, my heart broke. It shattered. So I said, let me just go about my business. Go to the park. I came out here to work out. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm on my way to the spot where I like to go. It's kind of like isolated. It's. You know, you don't have people with their cell phones snapping shots of the brother, you know, on the bar, you know, trying to make videos, and put it up on World Star. So it's a little isolated. But on my way there, I see a sister sitting on a bench. And the sister's sitting inappropriately and you can see the, the crack of her behind. Right. Because she's not clothed properly. Right. And I said, Mark, where's your shame, sister? Where's your fig leaf? That's right. Right? Yes, sir. Then I turn to the right and I see this, 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 I guess you can call him a man. Sitting with his legs crossed on the phone chatting with his head going like this. And his, and, his, and his wrist, like, you know, broke. <laughs> and all of this, I'm talking about within 10 minutes. I mean, not, not even 10 minutes. I'm talking about, I walked, like, walking towards the park. And, I mean, I saw, it was just like, boom, boom, boom. And it just hit me. <laughs> That's my goodness. What in the name of Allah? And I get to my spot and I see another another one of these sodomites. He's walking with another female and he got his 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 uh you know hair in a bun. My sister had the same style when she was like 13. When she used to take the hair, all her hair and just put it in a bun. <laughs> my sister wore that style. Right. That's what it is. Yes, sir. Then there's a herd of there's a herd of young girls. I'm sitting, I'm sitting down on the bench. I just got finished doing a rep. So I know that I look, I don't look very approachable because I got a lot of testosterone in me at this point. I just got finished doing a rep. I look like a killer. <laughs> you know how it is when you're working out. You know, it's a whole different mindset. And this herd of girls, they just come up to me. Excuse me, you know what time it is? Like, I'm like, and then not, excuse me, sir. Do you know, do you happen to know what time? But first of all, what the heck are you doing approaching me anyway? I'm a grown man. Where's your sense of security? They don't have any. 
Now, I got so, I mean, I literally, I was out there maybe about 15 minutes, and I couldn't stay because I was just so just disillusioned. Mm -hmm. I picked up the phone, called Raheem, and Raheem was, brother Raheem, excuse me, brother Raheem was my sounding board. Because right. I called him, brother, remember? Yes, sir. And I was, oh my goodness, brother. I was almost crying on the phone. Just venting. How did we get to this point? What happened? If the civilized person fails to perform his duty, what must be done? That's right. What? Is the prescribed law of Islam to the said person of that ability? I'm sitting here looking at this actual facts board, and I've taught all of this. I must have taught off of this board hundreds of times over the last five to six years. And it occurred to me, you know, when you see, when this board was, was designed originally by Master Farad Muhammad, it had these two, these two flags and then the question, which one will survive the war of Armageddon? Oh, and, and the reason why I noticed it, I heard Supreme Minister John Muhammad teach on this, the messenger's brother. Now, people talk about the, the, the reminder of this, and I'm a reminder of that, and the divine reminder, and blessing, no disrespect to anyone. Let me preface what I'm about to say. Because I don't make it a practice to disrespect what people believe in. Right? Yes, sir. But I don't go on 125th Street telling people that they worship mummies. I don't do that. You want to worship a mummy? That's your prerogative. Walking around with onks and you know all of you know that's your that's your business, brother. Right? I don't I don't do that. That's why you don't see me on 125th Street, even though I live a few blocks away, because I'm not trying to be in anybody's camera. That's why I don't put videos up. I only put audio up, because I know what the messenger told Malcolm, and what he told all of his ministers about that camera. Right. 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 Everybody want to be a superstar. Yeah. Right. That's all you see. Mm -hmm. That's right. Substance. All, all, all of this, uh, no, no substance. No. no substance whatsoever. No. Just no. symbol. Mm -hmm. At any rate, people talk about reminders. Mm. And I, it, you know, I was watching Supreme Minister John Muhammad the other day on, on YouTube. And I said, if anyone is a reminder of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it was this man. If anyone, I mean, when you saw, when I looked at him, I said, goodness, brother, man, this man looks like the messenger. Right. Talked like him. And the teaching was sound. It sounded just like what the messenger taught. Wasn't anything off. Wasn't, you, you understand what I'm saying? So he was teaching on the history of the actual facts board. And he said that the messenger later on added the tree, added the man on a tree, freedom, justice, and equality. He said, but initially, Master Farad Muhammad only had these two flags up with the question, which one will survive the war of Armageddon? Just a caveat, just a brief history on the board. Now, when this board was designed, lynch mobs were putting Aboriginal people, black people in America, literally up on trees. <laughs> literally up on a tree. But when you put a man up on a tree, Come on. you tie a rope around his neck and you right. cut the oxygen supply right. going to right. his brain. Right. Come on, teach, brother. Break it down. Now, in order for the brain to live, it must have oxygen. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. When you deprive a man of the knowledge of himself, you have effectively cut off his oxygen supply to his brain. Right. 
Now the minister was talking about words and enchanters. If anyone has ever, if you've never seen the movie 1984 by George Orwell, it was based on a novel called 1984. And in the book, if you don't have time to read the book, watch the movie. In one of the tools, the, the movie was based on this, this, this government that was totalitarian. And it had absolute control over the people. Like Animal Farm, exactly. Same author. Mm -hmm. And the like it was it was crazy because like if you were in your own home, they had cameras monitoring you in your home. Mm -hmm. You had no privacy whatsoever. Right. And if you one of the tactics that they used to keep the people under control in this novel, in this book, it was it was called changing the definition of words. Mm -hmm. Playing on psychology mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. by changing the definition of words. Think about it. When I was a child in the 1970s and growing up in the 1980s, when you called someone, excuse my language, a nigger, that was a fight. Mm -hmm. That was a fight. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Depending, well, you we're from different generation, and I guess the older you get, the older you are, the more offensive the term is because you remember literally a time when white people were calling our people niggers and not niggers, niggers, right? Now, I listen to Tupac. About 20, 20 something years ago, you know, brother died. He was very young. He was only 25. We forget how young he was at the time because I was very young when he died. He's, he's actually older than me. So we were all kids. You know, for lack of a better term, we were very young men at the time. So I was, I think I was 21 or 22 when he passed away. And he was 25. And you were a teenager. Yes, sir. Long time ago. But I remember Tupac saying there's a difference between N-I-G-G-A and N-I-G-G-E-R. The hell it is. It's just pronounced differently. There is no difference. And it's a word play. It's a changing of the definition of of words in order to psychologically trick our people into convincing us to refer to each other as a term that comes from the plantation. Come on, brother, teach. Did the devil love you when he called you a nigger? No, no, he didn't. Did he love your grandfathers when he put them up on a whipping post? No. For being disobedient? For not picking enough cotton? Teach, brother. Teach. There's no love in that word. No, it's not. Right. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. No love at all. You never say, you never hear brothers in the street talking about, yeah, I'm going to bust a cap in that brother. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. It don't even sound right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bust a cap in that nigga. Mm -hmm. And when I see that nigga, that's my word, son. Yeah. That's how brothers talk. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right. Because the word is the same exact word that it was on the plantation. And you are absolutely right, Sister Joan. That is how they think. You think with words. You don't think with any other mechanism. If I say a word, it draws an image in your brain. That's how we communicate. Right. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Teach, brother. Teach the mm truth. -hmm. Come on. Teach. Little Wayne is a nigger. Yes, sir. It's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> Little Yachty is a nigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Little Uzi Vert is a nigger. Oh, yeah. These are niggers. And they didn't have to. And the, see, the thing is, the way they trick us is that they don't have to use the word anymore. Right. They ingrained it so much into you that you became what he called you. You can 
judge a tree by the fruit that it bears. Right. Strange fruit, said Billy Holiday. Yes. Black body swinging from a tree. And what is a tree? You know where you are by the trees. I know when I'm in Georgia, when I start seeing palm trees and peach trees. When I'm in Florida, I see I see uh, uh, orange trees. That's right. I know I'm in the desolate north when I start seeing trees with no leaves. And nine month winters in this God forsaken place. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> Woke up this morning and said, my goodness, 39 degrees is April 15th. When is this going to end? Like Groundhog's Day, man, with Billy Murray, with Bill Murray. Oh, God. God. <laughs> but you know a tree, you can tell where you are geographically by a tree. Look what's on this tree. This is the tree, the fruit of this. That's right. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. Good old red, white, and blue. The messenger said, You call it old glory. That's what they call it. Said, I call it old hell. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Christianity. We don't have a problem with Jesus. No, sir. No, sir. That's my problem. Absolutely. Jesus didn't teach Christianity. Jesus taught freedom, justice, and equality. Did you know that this symbol, mm -hmm. the cross, was not the original symbol of the followers of Christianity, Christianity mm -hmm. or Christ, which is Greek for Messiah, Christos, mm -hmm. the followers of the Messiah, because the early community of Jesus's followers falsely believed him to be the Messiah. He was not the Messiah. Right. Messiah comes from the root word Masi, meaning one who travels much. Jesus never left Palestine. He went to Egypt to study, but returned to Palestine. He wasn't Masi, one who traveled the entire world and studied every civilized, every education system of the civilized world, speaking 16 languages, reading and writing 10 of them fluently. He wasn't that. Come on. Nonetheless, he was our righteous brother. Yes, right. Right. yes, sir. That's right. That's right. And he did not teach this. This was organized yes. by the Nicene Council in the year 325 AD. A council that was called by the emperor of Rome at the time. Constantine, who called together 300 bishops from around the Roman Empire to organize a new religion, which was called Christianity. This is not the religion of the black man. Christianity. This symbol was not the symbol that was used by the followers of Esau. Right. Yusef. Or Ibn Yusef. Esau Ibn Yusef. The son of Joseph. I know, I know what the book says, but, you know, let's be real. Every baby has 46 chromosomes. 23 come from the mother. 23 come from the father. There ain't no way around that, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Right. There ain't no, ain't no way around the DNA test. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Let's bring Jesus on the Maury Povich show. <laughs> Joseph. 
You are the father. <laughs> Snuck up with the goat's beard. That's why there are strict laws in Islam yes, concerning the separation of the two genders. And there are only two genders. That's right. There's only two. I know when you register on Facebook, they give you an option about like 72 genders. And <laughs> this devil is something else. I Master of deception. Yes, sir. Two genders, male and female. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. one or the other. And in the old world, there were strict rules concerning the two genders and their interaction. Yes, Why? Come on. All right. Because a woman in whom the 19th chapter of the Holy Quran is dedicated to. That's right. A holy woman. Was guilty of fornication. Yes, sir. Uh -oh. That's right. oh, I know I just ruffled a few feathers with that one. It'll be all right. That's a subject for another time. We'll teach on that one day, Brother Minister. Yes, sir. But the fish was the symbol. Right? In certain churches, use it. The ones that are try to remain true mm -hmm. to the original teaching. They keep the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. They don't eat pork. Right. They use the fish. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Very rare, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The cross came later. Right. Yes, sir. That's right. And the doctrine of the Trinity mm -hmm. came after the Nicene Council in what was referred to as the Council of Constantinople in the year 361 AD because they hadn't hammered out the, the, the entire doctrine. There were still some loopholes they had to close. Right, right, right. But you don't find the doctrine of the Trinity in the Bible. No. Doesn't exist. No, sir. In fact, much of what is taught in the church today doesn't come from the Bible. Right, right. It's innovation. That's right. That's right. That's right. Funny, you can say the same thing about the nation. Mm. Yes, sir. That's right. But we won't go there. <laughs> oh, yeah, it happens. No, no, briefly. I, I will say this because we are asked this often. Yes, sir. What's the difference between you and the followers of Farrakhan? All right. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes, sir. No, did I'm going to preface this again. No disrespect to anyone. I'm not in the practice of disrespecting people's beliefs. But there are some key differences. And it is a shame. It is a shame. It is a shame. Because if the nation was one, there would be no 13-year-old girls saying to another 13-year-old girl, my ex in this referring. It wouldn't happen. It wouldn't be. Yes, sir. If Wallace Muhammad did not destroy the nation, you would not see what you see today. Right. Right. It wouldn't happen. Right. Right. Because what he destroyed was the, 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 the umbrella of security. He destroyed the defense line. Trump talks about building a wall. The nation was the spiritual wall that separated the righteous from the wicked. In here, law exists. Yes, yes. teach, brother. In here, the sisters sit here, the brothers sit here. That's right. Come on. In here, if you're interested in that sister, you got to go through your captain. That's right. That's right. Mm hmm. Homie, don't play that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely. Law. Law. Right. Order. Yes, sir. That's right. Just like everything else, right? As it is in the heavens, so shall it be on the earth. Can you imagine if the earth just decided one day and said, you know what? 
I'm not going to obey the sun today. Right. That's what's happening. Let's see how we all end up. Uh huh. We all over the place. All over. Come on, brother. All over the place. It'd be a rat, as they say in the street. It's a rat, brother. It's a rap, all right. <laughs> Believe it. So there are some key differences. One of the key differences is we don't believe we, in terms of those of us who are followers of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we don't believe in any one minister that the messenger anointed. Right. We don't believe that. That's right. We, we don't believe that. And, and none the messenger, that you can't find any proof of that in any of the messenger's speeches, any of his writings. You can, you can, you can twist certain, you know, five to or maybe 30 second sound bites to make it sound like that's what the messenger intended. But when you contextualize these things, that it, that's not what the messenger meant. Yes, sir. Right. Come on. Come on. And so we don't believe in, in a nation of Islam pontiff. Mm -hmm. Come on. So right. to speak. Come on. We don't believe Teach. in we don't believe in a Muslim a black Muslim pope. pope. That's right. No, we don't. No, no we don't. That's crazy. That's right. We believe in the writings, the words, and the instructions, the speeches. Of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We hold those things to be the supreme authority in the nation of Islam. Above and beyond what any minister says, above and beyond what any any minister's interpretation, it is what the messenger said that is the supreme law in the nation of Islam. Yes, that's right. That is a major difference. Yes, sir. That's right. Because when you speak to one of those brothers or sisters, the, the minister said this. The right. minister said that. Right. Right. Yes, yeah. I'm telling you. And we say, no, the messenger said this, and the messenger said that. That's a point of departure. It's a shame. It really is. Because our people suffer. Yes. Yes, they do. They suffer tremendously. That's right. They confuse very We've lost a whole generation. Yes. Yes. Sir. More, yes. Than more. more than one. Yes. Yes, yes brother. Teach. Yes, sir. Teach. As a result of our immaturity. Yes. Our power hungriness. Come on. Come on. Come on. And certain agents. Let's just call yes. it what it is. Yes. Yes, That's sir. right. That's Agent right. provocateurs. Yes. That's right. Come on, brother. Teach. That's why you got to be careful, brother. Yes, sir. That's right. Because only the devil benefits from us fighting and killing one another. And we can't fight and kill one another and say we follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad because that's the furthest thing from what he taught. Us shooting each other, shooting threats at one another on the internet and Facebook, getting all out of character, acting like a bunch of niggas on the street corner. Yes, sir. There you go. Teach, brother. All because a man doesn't agree with your point of view. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Get all crazy. That's not Islam, brother. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. There is no compulsion in religion. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. There's no compulsion. There's righteous competition. Yeah. Right. There's deliberation. There's there's righteous argument. But there's no compulsion. You're not going to convince me that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is on the mother plane. Right. You're not convincing me of that. I'm sorry. You're not doing that. I don't care how many pretty words you, you use. I, it, it, it's just not happening. Right. Wally Baha was in the room. Right. And saw him take his last breath. Joshua Farrakhan was standing post in front of the hospital room and saw the doctor go in the room and put a mirror next to the messenger's nose. And there was no vapor, meaning no breath. 
his eldest son, consistent with Islamic law, prepared the messenger's body for burial. Common sense. Islam is a common sense teaching. If you hit me, I hit you back. Persecution is worse than slaughter. That is a common sense teaching. Don't eat pork. It's bad for your health. If it's not common sense, it's not Islam. Come on, brother. Teach the truth. Teach. The Holy Quran refers to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as the plain warner. Plain. Plain, meaning she can understand it. Come on now. That's right. Blood suckers complicate plain truth because they want to suck the life blood out of the people by complicating simple truth so they can hoard a portion of the population and suck the life blood out of them. So there are differences and it is a crying shame. Because we are brothers and sisters. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that every black, brown, yellow, and red man, woman, and child is brother to one another by nature. By nature, we are all brothers and sisters. So it is a crying shame, but there are some major differences. And they have to be made known. That's right. Because I'm not a Scientologist. I'm not, listen, brother, you're not going to get me dying this, put, hit, sit, confessing all of my, my, you know, and they asking you leading questions to get you to convince your deepest, darkest secrets so they can, so they can take a file and go like this. Anytime you get to decide and you might want to leave, they go, well, you know, on uh, April 15th, 2018, you said, I think you might want to reconsider. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. Confession is to Allah. Come on. Jesus, brother. That's right. That's who you confess to. That's, that's, right. Right. that's, that's right. only. Mm -hmm. That's who you pour your heart out to. There you go. Allah. There you go. All right. We're going to bring it home. <laughs> All praises due to Allah. Again, no disrespect. Yes, sir. You know. But goodness, I mean, yeah, I mean that 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 affected me the other day when I went to the park to work out. I was so angry because I was like, you know, we done become cowards in Islam. We done become a bunch of cowards, brother. Spiritual men, not just Muslims. People who say they believe us, we're a bunch of cowards. We done kowtow and allow this devil to turn our sons and daughters into freaks. And we don't stand up like men and fight for them. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Come on, teach, brother. Mm. Teach. That's right. Mm. Fight up, fight like a man, brother. Be a man. Persecution is worse than slaughter. That's right. Come on, teach, brother. Teach and the truth. Go in the right yeah, I know. I know my wife, my wife used to work for the Department of Education. Tell you, she had a, a, a six foot three woman with an Adam's apple and a five o'clock shadow in the bathroom with her. Said she ran out of there. I'm telling you, it's confusing. Freaks, freaks. And this, let me tell you how deceptive, see, the, the, blue, the blue in this flag is, stands for deception. A blue screen, right? A blue sky, right? Deception. Musa came 2,000 years later and taught the devil some of the forgotten trick knowledge, which Yaqub taught them, which was devilishment, telling lies, stealing, and how to master the original man. So they do all of that. And they say, oh, it's human rights. No, no, no. Human rights are your natural rights. That's what makes slavery such a sin. Because what is slavery essentially? 
Slavery is I work, you own my labor. Right. I don't own the fruits of my labor. No. I mean, we get mad now. We go to work 40 hours a week. Check, look at our check. And cut 28, what do you need 28% of my money for? Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, at what point is it tax versus theft? Come on, good question. At what point is it freedom versus slavery? I'm working for you. Right. So you can take my tax dollars and go blow somebody up in Syria. Right. Come on. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. There you go. Follow the money. Yes, sir. There you go. Follow the money. Yeah. Follow the money. Always follow the there money. There you go. Follow the money. Assad is winning over there. Mm -hmm. What benefit would it be for him to gas his own people right. and Come to on. bring all of this negative attention to he was winning. That's Come right. On. Come on. And if you topple him, what are you left with? ISIS? Right. I thought you were fighting ISIS. Come on. That's mm -hmm. Where is ISIS? ISIS. ISIS? What happened to ISIS? ISIS? What happened to ISIS? Yeah. What happened to Al Qaeda? I thought you were fighting these people. Right. Yeah, them Jews here. No, no. You topple Saddam, what do you got? Right. Political instability. You topple um, 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 Gaddafi, political instability, so they can create perpetual wars, so they can keep raising your tax dollars in the name of war, slavery by another name. Yes, come on, brother, teach. That's the that's the crime. Because if I work. I should own what I work That's for. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I should own it. That's right. I should have the right to do with what I work for the fruits of my labor. If I want to give the temple charity, I give the temple charity. If I want to take my wife out on a nice vacation, I do that. I should own my labor, right. not you. Right. 400, 400 years, four centuries of us working and you owning it. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Think about that. Yep. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Suffering. Suffering. You know what it must be like for a man to see his woman taken out of the out of the out of the shed? Right. Brought in raped. Come on, teach brother. If you say something, do something, you get killed. Because your life means nothing. Little mulatto babies like me running, running around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. true. I wasn't always this light skinned. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. You have created a whole, whole different, whole other breed of people. Yes, Just like y'all cool. In certain parts of Latin America, you go to, and the whole population is mulatto. Yeah, certain parts, the whole population is mulatto. And the Spanish government did that purposely to lighten the population, right. to make it less Negro, so to speak, right. because they were concerned with what had happened in Haiti, yeah. Toussaint Louverture and Jean Shark Dessalines. That affected the policy, the, 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 the breeding policies, yeah. the domestic policies of all of Latin America. And they said, well, we got to do something. In Puerto Rico, they have what was called the Treaty of Gracias in 1817, where they deliberately started importing Europeans from non-Spanish European countries. The only thing they had to do was, 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 was a, a, a sign a document that said they had loyalty to the Roman Catholic Church and to the Queen of Spain, and then they can come over. And then they started inbreeding among the population, right. making them lighter and lighter and lighter. This is what these devils do. Right. They play chess. That's right. We play on our smartphones. Right. And I'm going to close with this. There's a study that's been done. They, I think I said this before, I like to read print because I'm older. I'm in my 40s. So I was raised on print. I like highlighters. 
you know, uh, pens, I, in notes inside of the books, you know. And when when I when whenever I'm preparing lectures or something, or I need to write a paper, I always know where to find things because I have all of my end notes with my highlights and everything. So it's convenient for me. I'm, I'm just accustomed to studying that way. Um, we used to get photocopies of our lessons years ago. My brothers would fast for seven. Some brothers would fast seven days before they got their lesson out. That was street culture, not how it was in the temple. But even years ago in the street, there was a standard. My brother said, I wanted to study. He said, well, you got to give up eating pork. You got to give up this. You got to give up that. If you want a copy of your student enrollment, you got to fast for seven days. You know, there was there were standards, even in the street years ago, you know, among the 5% brothers. Yeah. Um, so we would go get photocopies. That's what I'm used to. Long story short. I'm used to print, photocopies, things like that, even though I know how to use a smartphone. But I don't like to read on my smartphone. And I have a Kindle on my smartphone, a Kindle program, Amazon Kindle, where I have about 30 books. And I think I've read maybe two or three books on it. It's I struggle with reading on there. And I realize why. It's because we ever read something on a, on a, on a, on a tablet or a Kindle or, and, and it's like advertisements are constantly coming at you. And then there's the temptation to, to go online and, and browse the web. So it, it, now if, if that's been the case, for almost 10 years now, since the Kindle came out and people reading on the internet, walking around with smartphones since the first Blackberries came out like 2009 or something right. like that. Yes, sir. Now, if you have that option, your attention span is like this. There you go. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because you, it's hard for you to focus on one thing at a time. Right. Because the part of the brain that is supposed to, the part, see, the brain functions like this. The, the right lobe and the left lobe mm -hmm. one is responsible for math one is responsible for intuition mm -hmm. and those two lobes they there's connections mm -hmm. that are made in your neurons which is your brain cells mm -hmm. right those connections have to fully mature for a human being to be considered matured right mm -hmm. now what happens is is with this technology those parts of the brain that were supposed that are supposed to be fully mature, that are supposed to connect in order to, to mature properly, they're not being developed. And that's the reason why you can't hold these young people's attention the way that you used to be able to hold it. You understand? When I learned martial arts, I learned it in a very traditional way. My C4 would tell me, stand here and breathe. Breathe. For 20 minutes straight, stand before he taught me any, you know, any, any, any techniques, how to, how to punch. Before he taught me anything, he taught me to stand and breathe. And what it's called, what the Chinese refer to as the monkey mind. The mind is constantly going and there's no, you can't focus it. So in, in the arts, in the traditional arts, you're taught a lot of exercises on how to focus your attention. Right? How to develop patience. And that's an issue that we're going to have to address if we're going to get these young people in here. We have to get, we're going to get these young people in here. We might have to get creative, start putting up screens, you know, using technology, you know, passing out handouts, a lot of different things we're going to have to do to engage them, you know, versus the way it used to be with us sitting down, you know, listening to the minister teaching. You know, I don't mind. I'm like I said, I'm in my forties. I was raised that way. Even when I went to church, it was like that, you know, as, as a child. But the young people today are different than us because the technology has made it different. So we have to consider that in our strategic, you know, uh, in our strategy. Sure. So, you know, all praise is due to Allah. So I, I'm, I'm pretty much done. I, I pray Allah that, you know, everyone enjoyed what we had to say today. I, I, I enjoyed the, bro the brother minister. And I said I wouldn't go for an hour. So I'm going to keep my word. I'm at about 49 minutes right now. <laughs> so let us bring our brother minister Kenneth back up to, to close us out. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum.